Okay, welcome back to David Maynard Studio, and today we're going to be painting um, this painting right here. This is a moonlight uh, night sky with uh, some trees. Uh, looks more like the winter time. So we'll be um, doing this a step-by-step -step painting course again, and uh, today our paints we're going to be using is an ultramarine blue. Uh, cerulean blue, we have a brilliant violet, and titanium white. Uh, our brushes today are also going to be a flat brush, roughly about a one inch brush, which is this one here. Also we'll have this handy in case we need it. Um, this is about a half inch brush, flat brush as well. We will be using a round brush, either number 8 or number 10, uh, whichever you have on hand. And lastly, we are going to be using a toothbrush. Yes, a toothbrush. So, we'll be, uh, I'll show you what we'll be doing with that later. So, <clears throat> if you do have your paints, uh, make sure your supplies also include rags or a paper towel of sorts. Uh, you will need that to uh, wipe your brushes off with, um, a jar or a cup of water to clean your brushes out in, and also, lastly, I think, um, I think that's actually going to be about it. Uh, you might, uh, we might even use a sponge here, um, so just keep that in mind. I'll, 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 actually, I probably will use this sponge a little bit just to show you some different techniques. And also the paper towels, um, that, that'll come in handy as we paint this. So I'm going to set up the canvas here to get it all ready. So this is what we're painting. Put that aside, and I'm going to set up my canvas here so you can watch as I do the demonstration. Now, again, whenever we do a painting, if you recall, um, or if you haven't painted with me before, a couple things that you need to be uh, aware of. Uh, I will paint uh a portion of the painting and then at that point you can pause the tape uh or not the tape the the video and um and do it and then come back and i will proceed now i do paint fairly quickly so do not try to keep up with me just because i know all the steps i'm going to be doing so just take your time don't rush this uh, just just enjoy the um, the painting as we do it. So uh, a couple other things is when you clean your brush out, and some of you who have taken my class before know what I'm talking about, but when you do this, don't just swirl your brush in the water. What you want to do is you want to take your brush and you want to push it all the way down to the very bottom of the cup of water. And then you want to swirl it like this. So that those brush, so that the uh, bristles of the brush are touching the bottom and bending, because what that's going to do is get that paint out of out of here. Uh, because what happens is when your brush is wet and the paint is on here, it weeps up into this crevice right here. This is where the glue seam is, and where the glue seam is, the paint will come up in here and sit and sit right here in the glue seam. So let's say we're painting black, we go and clean it out, we don't clean out very well. I then go to paint with white. Some of that black may weep up into this black or up into the white and make a gray. So that's why we want to clean the brush out as best we can each time that we, that we use it. We will be, or I will be, mixing on the palette, but I'll also be mixing a lot of the paint on the canvas. So in other words, instead of mixing here, we'll actually do the mixing of the paints right on the canvas itself. Um, and that should do it. So let's get started. Uh, our first color that we're going to use, we're going to use this black. Um, I have a Mars black, like an ivory black. Um, and if you, I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette here. And again, this is the basic paints. You can get these at Michael's, you can get them at Hobby Lobby. Uh, and so what you want to do is, these are more or less the beginner paints. Um, if you want to get into a little bit better um, quality, you can go with the Master's Touch. That's a little bit higher grade uh, paints. And then if you want to go even further, there are other paints available. 
um, such as the Master's Touch and, and, so, and some other. Liquitex is another uh, brand that's fairly good. But basically for what we're doing, especially if you're just beginning, you really don't need to get into purchasing high-end paints at this point. I actually recommend you don't do that if you're just beginning, just because it's, it's better that you start with something that you don't have to feel really uptight with. If you go out and buy this tube for $4.99 and use a 40% coupon on there and buy it a lot cheaper than that, you're not as uptight as if you go out and buy a, uh, a paint that's made by a company that's uh, called Golden, and that paint tube may cost you $20 instead of $4.99. You're going to be a little bit more uptight about painting with that $20 tube than you will the, the, the uh, more economical brands. So for that reason, I do recommend that you, you paint uh, with the lower end paint at this point. Differences in the, in the paints are the consistency of the paint. Um, the, the paint... Uh, the, the paints that are higher in have a thicker gel in them. Uh, in other words, they, they spread a lot further. It's kind of like your paint and primer in one in some respects, um, especially if, once you get into oils. Oils are really thick in density as far as your color and your pigments, uh, where these are more translucent. So in other words, I can put them on almost like a watercolor if I want to, or I can build it up and actually uh, put it on heavier. Um, okay, so first things first, um, when we look at this painting, we're going to start with the background. The background is the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my ultramarine blue and I'm going to paint pretty much the entire surface of this canvas with my ultramarine blue. Now, if you can see here, right in here, you can see how that's translucent. If you can just see how it's kind of white. Um, and when I put it on there, now my brush is wet, so that is going to make a difference. In other words, the, the more water I add to my brush when I'm doing this, the, the, the more translucent this paint is going to be. So what I want to do is I'm just going to cover this. I'm not real concerned about it being a completely even coat on here. I'm not worried about that. When I do paint, I do paint around the corners. I do not paint the sides or the top on a canvas like this. This is just a normal canvas. Thickness is like this. Um, if this was a gallery wrap canvas, it would be a lot thicker. And on those canvases, I do paint the, paint the edges just for um, presentation, and that's about it. Again, I'm going to paint this um, canvas and just cover this canvas like so. I am going to leave an area right in here right here where that's that moonlight's going to be so i'm going to leave that part of the canvas white <clears throat> and that's why you basically need to kind of watch what i do and not jump ahead and just and just dive in because i want to make sure i leave that white so that i don't have to put a lot of white pigment in there to make up for it now um, i'm going to carry this blue all the way down to the bottom And again, I'm not real concerned about the, um, the overall evenness of the paint. As you can see, I've got light areas, and that's again that translucent coming through the water, where the, and that's where the brush uh, actually leaves a canvas, leaves a mark. So you may wonder, how do I get rid of those um, marks? What happens is, as I'm painting, when I lift off the canvas, you can see what that does, it actually leaves a mark on the canvas. So how do you do that? Well, you can do what's called feather painting. In other words, just lightly touching the canvas. I can just come back and forth like this. If I do want to get an even consistency on here, like that, and I can just cover that canvas just gradually like this. Now, the reason I'm not real worried about that right now, because I am going to add some black in here. So I did say we were going to start with black, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the black here in a minute. This is actually ultramarine blue. So now I'm going to come in with this black over top of the ultramarine blue. I'm going to paint these edges just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of black into this ultramarine blue. It doesn't take a lot. It does not take a lot to do that. And the reason I'm doing this 
is I want to try to darken that blue up. So if I put a lot of black on there, my canvas is going to end up black. That's why I want to have this ultramarine blue come through. So, and I did say, yeah, I did say I was going to start with the black, actually. Um, I meant the blue. And I'm going to come back in with some more blue on here. Just to make that, that uh, blue just a little bit darker. Especially up here in the, in the top portions. There we go. There we are. Now I'm going to start feathering that in just like this. There we go. Coming down here and just kind of feather that across like that. So this is where you, I want you to go. I want you to work on this area right now. Go ahead and pause the video and work on this area. Again, start with your ultramarine blue, not the black, with the blue. Come back in with a little bit of black. You can always add a little bit more black, but if you put too much black in there, it's really going to dominate the blue. And I, what I want is I want this blue to come through here. See, I can even add a little bit more blue in this. I don't want this to be a black surface all the way across. So go ahead and do this uh, portion of it. When you're done, uh, turn the video back on and we will proceed to the next portion. All right. I'm assuming you stopped the video and now you're back. So what I want you to do is clean your brush out real good. Remember what I said, go all the way down and swish your brush around so that it gets really clean. And I'm just going to scrub it. I'm just scrubbing it. It's not going to hurt the brush any. Scrubbing it real good. Now, when you dry your brush off, okay, so my brush is really wet. I come up here up to the handle and I wipe down towards the bristles like that so that the bristles become smooth. The other, there's a couple reasons I do this. Okay, if I do, if I only dry off the bristles, what's going to happen is when I go to paint again, the water that's on the handle and on this metal part is going to come down the brush right in here and then it's going to drip. And when it drips, it's going to leave a mark right down your painting like this. And you don't want that. So. Uh, so that's why you take your you take your your rag or your paper towel and you just kind of wipe it like this, getting all the getting all that uh, water off of there. Okay, next step, we are going to take what's called cerulean blue. That is this color right here, and I'm going to add this cerulean blue around this white area into the blue while it's still wet. Now this is where I'm mixing directly on the canvas. And if you recall, when we added the black, we did the exact same thing. We actually mixed that black into the blue while it was wet on the canvas. And this is what's uh, called like a wet on wet painting style. Bob Ross was very well was very well known for doing a wet on wet canvas. Uh, what he did, um, he used acrylics and he did use oils, but he uh, actually put uh, a white coating over all of his paintings and started with the painting so that the canvas would be wet when it start when he started. And yeah, there's actually a product out on the market now uh, in, in Bob Ross's name made for wet on wet surfaces. And I think I even have a sample of that somewhere here in my studio. I'm not sure where, uh, but that is actually a product that you can buy. So. I just added this cerulean blue into my canvas, um, just kind of going around the circle of the, where the moon's going to go. And I'm just kind of making it kind of a lighter color around that area, carrying it out from there, just like that. Okay, so go ahead and do that. That's step number two. So go ahead and, and add your cerulean blue um, paint it around to this area. You don't need to go all the way down here um, with that, but you just want to kind of make sure you get around the, the, the moonlight area. So go ahead and do that. Pause the, the tape, the video uh, at this point, and, um, and then come back. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush out now. Now I'm going to, again, clean it out real good. Take my rag, wipe up, 
get all the water off. I'm going to come over here and add some white. This is where I'm going to start adding the moonlight here. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did with that cerulean blue, and I'm just going to start coming out. Now I'm going to actually carry some of that blue into this area. I'm not worried about that. And I'm just kind of creating a lighter atmosphere around this moonlight. Now, what's going to happen is as you paint this, you're going to, if you go back in here, you're going to, it's going to turn blue. Now on this painting, it turned a little bit, it turned blue in here, which is fine. Uh, but you just got to be real careful that you don't get it to make it look like it's really, really blue. So right now I'm just going to feather this out further. Again, mixing directly on the canvas. Just like I'm doing here. There we go. All right, I'm going to clean my brush out right now while I'm doing this. And I'm going to come back in with just a wet brush, no paint on it at all. And I'm going to start blending some of this blues together. And the water allows me to do that, to blue, to blend these blues back in, in here and actually feather it out without putting paint on there. So the water itself is almost working as if it were a paint itself. And that's something that you want to be able to keep in mind when you're painting, that the water itself is an element or a material that is considered equal to the paint that you're using. And you can use it to your advantage. It can also be used, water can also be used almost like an eraser if you're using acrylics. And um, that's something I teach on occasion, how to use water, to use it in order to get um, some of the paint off of your canvas if you have an area that you don't like. All right, so I'm just coming in here, creating that, making it look like the moon has this aura around it. Now I'm going to come in with, uh, clean my brush out, come back in with some more white and just paint that area again one more time, right in the center to define it a little bit better. There we go. And I'm not worried about trying to make it a circle circle. In other words, I don't want to define it like a, an actual sharp edge on there. What I'm doing is I'm creating atmosphere when I do this. <clears throat> and that's what gives this painting uh, some of the qualities that you like is it has atmosphere to it. Atmosphere adds mystery to the, uh, to the painting. It actually adds a, um, an element of, in the painting that makes it look like it's, um, it makes it more interesting. So that's why I like to do it this way, just to create that atmosphere in there. And in nature, a lot of times if it's a foggy night, like this could be a foggy night, or if there's a lot of moisture in the air, you're going to get some haze like this. There we go. And then when you're done with that, I'm just going to come back in with some ultramarine blue one more time. Come in from the edges. And I'm going to work my way back into the center. Just by doing that to, to, dar to darken this edge up a little bit more. Because if, and this is something that if, if you painted this and you went too far out and you lost some of that dark blue in there. Just come back in. You can repaint it. I'm going to add a little black here to it, as you can see, but I'm working my way from the outside in like this. And what this is doing is just kind of creating some depth in my painting when I do it this, like this. Because if I get a, if I get too much blue in there and I don't have some of these dark elements to help separate it, it becomes uh, a little bit more monochromatic, and that's not what I want right now. Okay, so go ahead and do this section, and pause the video, come back when you're done. When you're done, again, clean your brush out real good, scrub it out, and then make sure that you wipe it like that real good. Okay.
Okay, what we're going to do next, this is going to be interesting. All right, so if you'll notice in this painting here, there's kind of this purplish color throughout here, and it just kind of adds a little bit of atmosphere, almost like a Milky Way type of look to it. And I'm going to show you how I do that. <clears throat> I'm going to actually take a paper towel. Now I can also use a sponge. I'm going to get this sponge wet. So I'm going to show you two different techniques. If you don't have a sponge, don't worry about it. Uh, this might be something you may want to purchase in the future, something like this, because you can use this for textures. So I'm going to take this. I'm just going to add a little paint to that to that sponge. That I'm going to use this uh, violet. And what I can do is yeah, maybe a little bit too much. So let me show you what I got here. Just a little bit. See, I don't. It's not covering the whole sponge. Just a little bit. So I can just come in here and add. Some of this paint on here. Now, what, it, what it's doing actually, it's also kind of kind of cool because what it's doing is actually lifting some of this paint off the canvas at the same time. So I'm just kind of dabbing this on here, and I'm just kind of creates kind of like the Milky Way. Now you can do the exact same effect with a just a piece of just a little piece of. Uh, of uh, paper here, a paper towel, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to come in here, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm dabbing this in here, and as I do that, it is lifting some of that paint off the canvas, which is fine. I'm not worried about that. Because this is actually kind of creating some really kind of neat effects here. Now, I'm not going to go into the moon with this. I'm just going to kind of go around it. There we go. Okay. So just a little bit of, you don't want a lot on here. So I don't want you to go overboard with it. I just want you to go ahead and just experiment with that. Uh, play with it a little bit. If you need to, if you don't, if you got too much, come back in with your brush and then just kind of soften those edges out a little bit more again, like this. And you can get rid of some of those if you've got too many of them. The nice thing about acrylics paints and, and actually painting, um, it's, not, it's not done until it's dry, if that makes sense. And even in, in that case, um, it's not completely done because you can go back into it. Um, if, even if you want, even if it's dry, you can still go back into a painting and correct things if you want to. Or I should say change things. Okay, go ahead and do that section. Again, take a piece of paper towel or a sponge, if you have a little sponge like this underneath your sink somewhere. Uh, when you're done, clean out your sponge because if you don't, that paint's gonna harden on there and it'll ruin your sponge to be able to use it later. So clean it out real good, get the paint out as best you can, and then let it dry off the side. Okay, see you back here in here in just a few minutes. Okay, next thing we're going to do all right, this is, um, this is where we're going to use the toothbrush. Now, the toothbrush, um, we're going to use that to basically to make our stars. So I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm getting some water on there, just kind of, you know, getting the water, the excess water off. Now I'm going to mix some paint onto my brush. I'm going to show you what I've got here once I get it all mixed what it looks like. So I just took, I I'm taking white. Okay, can you see that? It almost looks like I got toothpaste on there. I'm going to tap it a little bit. Now, I can do this a couple of different ways. I could kind of hit it like this. Yeah, it's not going to fly. You can do that. Oh, I got a lot of, little bit of uh, paint on here, I guess. Hang on a minute. A little bit too much blue when I was mixing that. Now it's all over my hands. Fortunately, with acrylics, acrylics is water soluble. It comes off really easily off the hands. Sometimes it can stain clothes, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick this paint like this. Now, I don't want that. As you can see, I've got some squiggly lines here. I don't want that, so I'm just going to blend those in. 
And then what that means is I've probably got a little bit too much paint on here. So I'm going to try to get some of that paint off of here. I'm just going to beat that off of there. Now I'm going to try it again. And what basically... There we go. Now I'm getting it. Now so I'm getting a little bit too much of this. Too much of the squiggly lines here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to correct this. So this is a good... This is a good lesson here. I'm going to come back in, come in with my black and my ultramarine blue. I'm going to fix that section. So uh, this, this is good for you to see because I didn't like the way that came out. So I just went back in and repainted that area. It did not um, concern me a lot when I made those, uh, when those things kind of really went off and did its own little thing there. So I'm going to try this again. Now I'm also going to show you how to do this without, um, if you don't have a toothbrush to use. Okay, I've got less on here and I see if I can come back here a little bit further. There we go. Now it's working. See that? Just flicking it off here like this. There we are. Now we're getting some stars. Just like that. Now, if you don't have a toothbrush, what do you do? Okay, so take your smaller brush, this one here. This is the half inch. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get some paint on it. Now, I can do it like this and just kind of... you got to watch it because it's going to go everywhere. So if you're doing this in a room... Um, just be careful that when you do this, it's not going to hit something that you don't want to get paint on. My studio, I got paint everywhere. I got all over the walls and everywhere else on the floor. But you can take your other brush and just kind of go like this. Get a little bit more paint on here. And do the same thing. Ooh, see, look at that. There we go. That's cool. Makes it really... So it's showing that there's a lot of stars out here. Okay. So that's another way to do it. If you don't have the toothbrush, use the paintbrush and just kind of hit it like that. The other thing is now I'm going to take my num number eight or number ten brush and I can come in here and I can actually put like little stars in here or planets or something, make them a little bit bigger. I'm just going to come in here and make some ones that are a little bit brighter, a little bit larger. Okay, so I got a few of those in there now. All right, so do that. Have fun with that. Again, if once you do this, make sure behind you and around you, you're not going to get paint on anything that you don't want. So just be careful when you do that. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and then come back here and, uh, once you get that done, and we'll go to the next section. All right, next section. I'm going to take my one-inch flat brush. Clean it out, dry it off real good. Coming back in here with some black paint. And if you'll notice on here, again, here's our paint painting. We're going to come down here, we're going to make this arch down through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to paint this solid like this. There we go. I'm just going to paint this kind of a curvature here, like that. And then on this section here, I'm just going to kind of rough it up a little bit. Kind of make it look like there's brush down through here, a silhouette. And this is a silhouette painting. So I'm, and, and what, I, what I call it, in other words, a silhouette painting is, you see a lot of those where it's, you have sunsets and then you have the shadow of a pine tree or a palm tree or something. Those are called silhouette paintings. And that's kind of what this is here. This is a silhouette painting. Okay, so I've got that put in here like this. Go ahead and do this section. Clean your brush out. When you come back, we'll go ahead and we're going we're gonna to work on the trees.
Okay, we're going to put these trees in next. And as you can look, when you look at the trees, I, I angle them kind of going towards that moonlight. They're not just straight up and down. But you can see I, I've kind of angled those towards um, almost like there's a fisheye lens on this cam on, uh, camera on this uh, painting. So when I do this, I'm going to take my number 8 or number 10 brush. And I'm going to get some uh, black paint on it. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to only make the trunks of the trees. Starting at the bottom, working my way towards the top. As I go towards the top, I, I gradually lift my brush off of the canvas so that it gets thinner at the top. Now I had a little bit too much water on my brush, so I'm going to dry this out and I'm going to do the next one. So, because when I did this, I don't know if you can see it, but there, it's kind of a, it's not really solid. It's got some blue coming through. So I'm just going to gently go through there one more time like that. And I'm just going to do that with all these trees, just kind of make some more trees here. Now, taller trees are going to be thicker because they're going to be closer to you and they will go higher. Trees that are further away, the base will be thinner and they will not go up as high. So don't make like this tree here the same thickness as this tree here. The reason is because I don't want it to look like um, this tree is actually in front of that one. This one should be in front of the other one. So you got to kind of think of that, think that through when you do this. So this tree, I'm just going to come on almost straight up, all almost all the way to the top. Make that a little bit thicker. Again, as I go up, I'm actually kind of rolling my brush a little bit. Rolling it means I'm turning it as I go up a little bit to get the paint on the other side of the brush. I'm going to come in here and make this one just a little bit shorter. I'm going to put one right in between here and I'm going to make this one really somewhat thin and not going up very far at all. So that, so basically what I've got, this tree here, as I'm going up, as you can tell, it's thicker, but it's going higher. So that makes it look like this tree is in front of these other trees. I'm going to bring another one up here. It's not going to go as high. I'm going to bring it right in front of that moonlight. The reason I'm doing that further back. Oop, got a little thick there. That's all right. I'm just going to carry that up a little bit higher then. There we go. And I'm thicker here in the middle than at the base, so i got to widen that base out just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to do another one here. Not as thick, not as tall. There we are. Make this one a little bit thicker, a little bit taller. As you can see, I got thin in the middle, so I'm going to come back here down to the bottom again, kind of work my way right up the middle of that tree. So I'm not going wide, I'm just going right up the middle. And I've carried up here like that. I'll put one over here. Like so. And one more right through here. There we go, like that. Okay. So these are the base of the trees. As you can see, I did not do any branches at all on these trees. All I'm worried about right now is just doing the, the trunks of the trees. Branches are coming next. So go ahead and do your trunks of your trees. And you don't need to do the exact same amount that I did. Just look at your painting and just work at um, whatever looks best to you. So go ahead and pause the, the video and then come back when you're ready. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add these branches on here. So, I'm going to give you a look again. These are our branches. 
and I'm just going to start branching off on some of these trees here a little bit. You can see, uh, actually, my, my trees are a lot thicker than this one here, but that's all right. Um, yours might look thinner on some of your trees, uh, but that's, that's okay. Each painting comes out different a lot of times, so don't worry that it doesn't look exactly like mine, or um, I'm not worried about the one that, that's not looking exactly like the one I did before. I did this uh, painting not too long ago with a group of people um, as a just kind of a fun night event. It was a, one, of the, one of the things called a paint and sip and we did that at a local pub and uh, the people really enjoyed that. Okay, coming up here just kind of creating my branches. Now, as you go up here, when I'm doing these, I'm, I'm actually, this is really key. If I push hard on this brush, what's going to happen is it's going to make a fat line. So you have to control the brush. When you go up, you want to just kind of gingerly, just gradually touch the canvas. You, you're not even, you're not pushing on that brush. You're not bending those bristles very much. You're just allowing that paint to flow off of the top tip of the brush. Let me carry this up just a little bit further. There we go. And so do that with all of your trees. Just allow these branches to kind of just reach up towards the heavens. Just like this. Now, as you can tell, almost all my trees, when I, when I paint, I'm painting upwards. I'm not painting down. I'm following the trunk, and then I'm breaking off a little bit. And so this one got a little thick, so I'm just going to widen that out here at the base just to make it look a little bit like a, like a tree in the natural woods. And that, uh, so... I'm going to get my brush wet. My brush is drying out. If I get this wet, damp again, it's going to help flow the paint even more. There we go. See that? My brush was getting dried out. In other words, it was losing the water consistency in the bristles. So now when I add a little bit of water on there and let it get, get damp, it makes, the, it makes the paint flow even better off the tip of the brush. Keep that in mind when you're painting with this. There we are. Okay, so go ahead and do all this. If you're not already, uh, you can pause the tape and I keep calling it a tape. You know, it kind of shows my age, doesn't it? Pause the video and Come back when you're done, and we'll finish things up. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, you have, we started with the background, which is the, we start with the ultramarine blue, added the black into it to make it to really pull it out. And what that black did actually added some depth into the painting, and that's one of the things we wanted. Came back in with cerulean blue, right in this area. We added the cerulean blue into the blue. Again, I came back in with a little bit of black, just added more depth. Came in with white, worked from the center out, painted that area, and worked that around, and then. Um, after we did that, I used the toothbrush and or the brush, and we added the stars around here. Lastly, we came in with the black down here, added the curve, made the trunks, and now we finished up with the branches. So, uh, oh, I'm, so I'm sorry, one other thing we forgot, I forgot we did. Uh, we did add that purple haze through here, 
uh, the purple, and again using either the sponge or the little piece of paper towel. So this is basically it. Um, at this point, um, something you can do if you want. I'll show you what, it, what, I, what you can do. Now this is this again is a silhouette painting. If you want to add a little bit more depth to this painting, I'm going to take a little bit of white. Now I did not do that on this one here. You can see there's there's no white on this at all. I kind of like this just because it you know really makes those trees stand out. But this is something different you can do if you wanted to. You can actually come in here on one side and you can actually add a little bit of white on here. It's going to turn it into a gray. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to make it look like there's uh, moonlight hitting your trees a little bit. It adds a little character, a little depth into it like this. And you know, I'm, and I'm blending it in while it's still wet. That way I'm not getting a bright white. I don't want a bright white on the, on the trunks of the trees. But this basically adds a little bit more depth into your painting. This side, I am painting it on the right side. This side over here, I'm going to paint it on the left side. Like so. Like that. And what that does is, is you see that what that's doing is it's actually making it look like it's casting shadows on those trees. So that's just something you can do for fun. Um, then at the end, if you want to, if you want to sign it, just take your, your um, number 10 or number 8 brush and then just use a white and then just however you want to do it. Down there at the bottom. And then you are done. So very simple painting in a lot of respects. Um, if you have questions, go to my Facebook page. If you want to post a picture of this, my Facebook page is David G. Maynard Art. Um, so you can go on my uh, Facebook page or you can go to my other web, uh, my other Facebook page is Creative Awakenings. Uh, and just post a picture on there. If you have questions, just send me an email at David G. Maynard Art at gmail.com, David G. Maynard Art at gmail.com. And I hope this was uh, something that you enjoyed doing. Um, I will be posting some other videos online um, that are going to be just free for you to, to um, take a look at. If you are interested in taking art lessons from me, I will be offering art lessons on my, on my website at davidgmaynardart.com. And I'll be getting that up and running here shortly. So enjoy this, and I hope uh, you join me again. I will be posting another uh, video probably later this week on another painting. Thank you.